right, and on to a story that will bring us into the discussion of the day. Traders of fixed income securities are set for greater efficiency in trading following last month's integration of the Nairobi Securities Exchange bond system with the Refinitiv's fixed income callouts application, popularly known as FICO. The integrated system is expected to facilitate trading of fixed income transactions, supporting bet better price discovery, enhanced market liquidity, improved trade negotiations, and execution. The integration makes Kenya one of the first frontier markets globally to use automated over-the-counter fixed income workflow. The integration is also expected to bring about reduced costs by eliminating duplication of related work and manual interventions. High risk business. When you invest in your passion, money comes in. Open that account today and start trading. And there's no right time. This is the time. All right, we are now ready to resume or st start our discussion of the day as we promised you earlier. This morning we are talking about how you can invest at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And I'm in some really good company of people and experts who can help us break down just how you can go about investing at the NSC. What is the best time to buy? What is the best, uh, the kind of the best stocks to invest in? With me in studio this morning, Kevin Gig is a senior equities dealer at Genghis Capital. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Uh, also with us is Irungu Wagema. He is the Chief Officer of Cash Markets at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. It's good to see you. And I can see Kevin got the memo and brought with us um, a pinstripe suit. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, let me start here, uh, and I'll start with you, Kevin. So I have 200,000 shillings in my pocket, and I want to perhaps start a barber shop, and I want to maybe go into agribusiness, and any other option on the table for me to invest my money. But why should I think about um, you know, going into the stock exchange? I mean, it's a nice question, and thank you very much for the question. The chase here is really simple. Um, you look at the long-term uh, benefits that outlay your, your, your investments. So we have seen a couple of uh, low-income to middle-aged businesses killed by the pandemic, for instance. No one had foresaw, no one predicted a pandemic this, or even a pandemic of any nature would, would hit a zero. It came like a tsunami, it swept out businesses, it swept out disposable income. But for instance, if you had been invested, say, in a bond, a five-year bond, you'd still be reaping the benefits through the coupons, semi-annually. So every six months you'd be paid a coupon, and that would uh, presumably uh, sail you through the pandemic. So if you're going to look at uh, an investment that is long-term, that is guaranteed by the sovereign, then yeah, that's part of the reason you should join the, the stock market. Okay, yeah. as part of the insights, of course, we'll be expecting from you and David in a bit. But even before I bring in David to tell us how to go about it, we want you to be part of this discussion because this is definitely something we have been trying to highlight uh, over the last few years. And you can be part of this discussion on social media, on Twitter at NTV Kenya, uh, at Victor Kiprop underscore, use the hashtag new normal. The conversation is also ongoing on Instagram and Facebook. Remember that on our question of the day, we asked you, have you ever traded in stocks or bonds? Have you ever traded in stocks or bonds? What would you want to know about investing at the NSC? Send in your questions. The two gentlemen, I can tell you, are capable to tell you how you can go about um, doing that. Now, David, Kevin has just spoken why, uh, about why you actually need to maybe consider, um, you know, putting your money in the stock exchange. Well, so let's say I'm, I'm con starting to consider to invest in the stock exchange as opposed to my barber shop and as opposed to maybe going into agribusiness. Okay, fine. How do I go about it? All right, thank you very much. Uh, so, so I think first of all is to give you a big welcome to every person who's actually thinking about the stock market. Actually, we want any time anyone thinks about investment, they think the stock market. Yeah, that is what we are really pushing and also we are making it even easier than ever to be able to come on board. So to get started, even to start trading at the stock market, you will need to work with a, with a broker. We normally call them a trading participant. Uh, the trading participant becomes your relationship manager. They become the people who are advising you. You can buy here, you can buy there. And then also they will help you to have a bank account for shares. I'm just breaking it down very simply. So that bank account for shares, we call it the CDS account. So the CDS account is where all your shares will be put. 
as you go on with the investment journey. So it is very important and the broker would be able to help you with that process. So they'll be able to help you to open that account and then anytime you need to start now trading, you would put your money with the broker and then the, 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 uh, we call them just brokers or trading participants and then they'll be able to purchase for you uh, the, the, the shares that you'd like. So something that is very important even for any person who's looking at uh, investing. There's something Kevin has mentioned about having a long-term plan. You see, it's always good to have a plan. One of the biggest issues that we've had in the stock market are many people who have not been able to get good returns. And the reason is because, unfortunately, and I'll say it as it is, many Kenyans like to, there's this IPO thing. People are just investing when they hear an IPO. An IPO is an initial public offer. That is when you hear that, that a company is offering its shares to the public mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, then you go and, and you buy that. And then people just go by what people are saying. So nobody has like a, a guide or, or something that they have um, that is guiding them. So it is just by here say, oh, oh, I've had, ah, right now, Safaricom is a share to go. Why, why, why? Everybody's buying Safari, Safaricom. Go buy quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's very important for someone to be able to have a plan. So one of the key things then, if I can just summarize, the first thing, get in touch with a trading participant or a broker. Secondly, go ahead and open a CDS account, which is your bank account for shares. And thirdly, have a, a, a plan, an investment plan. So that one will help you even despite, even like right now you're having COVID, it will be like your guiding compass or a map okay. so that you can be able to see how you invest. I'm going to come back to you in a bit. But Kevin, where do I find the stock brokers? Do I go to a certain building or do I take a bus uh, on a certain route? So things have changed. Uh, traditionally, we would all sit in, in one building and we call it the open outcry. Funny enough, and coincidentally, it was in this building. So nowadays, uh, the market has become, we've gone digital, basically, so to say. So uh, the one-stop shop where you can find a list of all listed and licensed trading participants would be at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So that's www. Uh, nsc.co.ke and you can get all the trading participants because now we sit in different buildings in different places within Nairobi. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And even before I bring in David, so then uh, why can't I do it, um, you know, directly on my own? Why do I need a middleman in, this, in, the, in the name of a stockbroker? So you can trade directly on your own, but you'd need to go through a trading participant because we are licensed to undertake uh, such activities by the Nairobi Securities Exchange. So you can come to uh, trading participants or a broker if you may. You can create an account with us and we can then give you access to the direct market, yeah, through one of our, uh, of our platforms. So it's possible for you to trade for yourself yes, but you need to be licensed uh, by the Nairobi Securities Exchange for obvious reasons. Okay. Yeah. So David, then uh, maybe Kevin is almost convincing me to not go the agribusiness way or, or the barbershop way and, and put in my money. But not everyone is going to have the 200,000 shillings that I have. Yes. What is the least amount of money I need to, uh, before I can start investing? Uh, well, 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 to begin investing with as little as even a thousand shillings, you can actually begin investing. It's actually a myth that you have to have a lot of money uh, to start getting, uh, to start investing in the stock market. Actually, I would even advocate for people to start small. Why? Because you see, if, if you put in a lot of money and then you lose that money, it becomes very painful for you. But if you start small, you can be able to learn and as you make maybe some mistakes and some good wins, then you can be able to capitalize. Because like anything else, it's just like when you want to learn a skill, like when you want to learn how to walk. Uh, chances are there's no baby who's, who's never fallen. Mm -hmm. So the same thing also in the stock market. So even as you are learning how to take maybe your baby steps, I'd encourage you, even with a thousand, there are different counters that we have. Right now, the beautiful thing about the market is that, uh, of course, most of the, the counters are very highly discounted. So, so because of the COVID and the situation so th that is prevailing economically. So someone is able to actually uh, maybe buy some stocks, but it would be very important to have research. Yeah, you know, they say that if you think um, uh, if, you, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. <laughs> so you don't want just to buy a stock just because you're, you're, you're thinking it's just affordable. So it is not just the affordability of the stock. All the, the, the whole market, the stock market is an auction market. So there are no fixed prices. So the market is dynamic. It is reacting to the forces of demand and supply. What that simply means is that as more people want a particular share, the price will go up. Mm -hmm. And as people are selling, uh, a share, then the price goes down. So that is simply what is happening. So it, there are no fixed prices. So it is very important. Every day, the stock market publishes a price list. It's also available on the dailies, and you can be able to see what 
uh, the different stocks are, are going at, and then you can be able to choose where to begin. Like I mentioned, a trading participant becomes important because they will be able to advise you. So they can, you can look at, uh, you, 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 you can research about the companies, look at different things, especially around COVID. I would highly encourage uh, if you could be able to see the companies that are uh, resilient. There are some sectors that took a hit, mm -hmm. so it is something that you can also be able to see. In fact, I'll come back to how the process of perhaps identifying which stocks and, uh, are the best to invest in. But let me just take you back to the, 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 the basics of requirement. And so let's say Kevin is okay. the stockbroker, yes. and, and I'm going to him to help me create my CDS account and maybe start my journey. And you've mentioned that I need a thousand bob. So other than the thousand bob that I have, what else do I need in terms of documents? Do I need to come with my passport? All right. Okay, thank you. And, and actually, it's good that you're here with Kevin. So, of course, he knows, uh, and, and there's, something, um, uh, so, so there's something that he has mentioned, whereby you'll need to identify yourself. So, one of the things that, that even you'll need as you engage a broker is your identification. So, probably you'll need, if it is an, you can register an individual and also a company. So, if it is an individual, you'll need your ID. And then, of course, uh, sometimes they need to have proof. Of, uh, that you are a real person and you, are, you, you have maybe some, some electricity bill or, a, or maybe some, um, maybe, uh, maybe you're, you're, where you are staying, maybe a letter from your landlord, some, some basic things, which I think Kevin is even better pleased to actually mention. So those are all physical documents plus a photo of your ID. So Kevin, I don't know, maybe you can yeah. elaborate more. He's gone almost all the way. So you need a copy of an ID, a utility bill. So that could be an electricity bill, a water bill, something that shows basically I live on Thicker Road. You know, uh, going for, you'll need a copy of your passport picture mm -hmm. and you need a KRA pin. These are prerequisite uh, documents required by the government. It's not for our own uh, records. These are uh, KRA is part of the records required by, by the governments. So with that, and as you don't even need the 1,000 shillings as, as David had mentioned, you can even come to us and open an account for free. Yeah, so then you can start saving slowly by sending money to, the, to your trading participant and that money is credited to your shares account. Yeah, okay. what you call the CDS account. Okay. Yeah. But gentlemen, you, you will agree with me that I, there should be 60-something companies in the, in the exchange. 65. 64. 64 companies yeah. in the exchange. I am Victor Kipop. Maybe I'm just, um, let's say, uh, I've just come from the university or even after Form 4. I'm thinking of going into the stock exchange. But 64 companies, um, and the process is perhaps filled with the jargon, and they are identified <laughs> using, using some certain tickers. If it's the, the National Media Group, it's, it's not even NMG, sometimes it's NGM or XYZ, you see. <laughs> how do I know which company should I invest in? And, 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 and yes, and the best time perhaps to invest in, the, in, in, their, in their stocks. Uh, maybe before we go there, yeah. allow me to also point out something that he mentioned. Yeah. So that everybody doesn't think we are, we are a cake. Okay. So, so right now in the stock market, we've gone digital. Mm -hmm. So you can actually open those requirements that we've mentioned. You can open them through an app. So you can actually, uh, you can actually go ahead and, uh, like he mentioned, on the NSC website or on the NSC app, Nairobi Securities Exchange, if you type that on Play Store or App Store, you can actually be able to download the app. And once you download the app, it has a list of all the different trading participants. And then you'll be able to see uh, that there are even apps. They have apps and some have online share trading. And then you can actually, uh, even with these COVID restrictions, wherever you are, from the comfort of your home, if you're watching right now, you can actually go ahead to the NSC website, www.nsc.co.ke, or on the App Store, Nairobi Securities Exchange, or Play Store, and then you download the app. There you'll be able to see the list of the different brokers. It will ask you, uh, once you download, say, the Jengis app, they have an app, then you'll be able to actually self-serve. So that means that you'll be able to give the details. And within three days, you have your account. So mm -hmm. from the comfort of your home, and then like you said, no, no charges are applicable. So from there, you can be able to see also the list of the 64 companies that we have on a real-time basis. So wherever you are, you could be co in commute, you can be able to see and actually get to engage and trade. I thought that was important. But now let us go to the selection of shares. Thanks, David. So when it comes to shares, it's, uh, it's a pretty basic thing to do. So some different clients come to us with different requirements. So some will come after having, uh, you know, having done a finance course, and they know a thing or two about banking. Mm -hmm. So they've been looking at and then me. Yes. And then there's you, and there are many <laughs> others. Yeah. So you'll come to us. You have your 1,000 shillings. You want us to buy your stock. You don't know which stock you want to buy. So we usually do what you call a risk profile. So we look at... Uh, uh, this is a thousand shilling. How long will you need it? Do you need it in the next two weeks, in the next two months, in the next year? So from then, we can be able to tell um, your, your 
financial requirements. So once we do the risk profile, then we're able to advise which portfolio to put you into. So we have, a, like in Jengis, we have a momentum, we have an income, we have an aggressive portfolio. So all that depends on the risk profile uh, score that you, you, you scored earlier on. So once you get there, we're able to give you, we'll tell you, okay, we think that uh, we need to buy you some conservative stocks, like, you know, Safaricom mm -hmm. is, is, is the big, I think 57% of the NSE, mm -hmm. uh, David, he has to confirm, you know, the next. In terms of market cap. In terms of market cap, yeah, yeah. that's the price, the, the number of shares. Yeah. Then we put you in stable banks, like, you know, equity, KCB, et cetera. And now you're able to monitor your portfolio through, again, our online app, which is called Jacuzzi. Yeah. So there are very, very many ways to uh, help you come up to, uh, to, to an investment option. And there are very many ways to also track it. And remember, it's an open market, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. So if the stock goes up to, uh, say, 10 15%, which was your uh, uh, profit requirements, then you're able to exit easily and get onto another stock. Yeah. So okay. it's easy that, yeah. Okay. But, but again, when it comes to return and returns, and we'll come back to that in a bit, then Company X may be the biggest company in Kenya. Uh, and, and Company Y may be uh, the smallest company. But in terms of returns, I might there's a difference between what I can get from those companies, right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, the size of the company doesn't necessarily mean uh, it has a higher return. So, for instance, the biggest company in Kenya by a mile is Safaricom, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you have one of, you know, almost all the smallest companies, you know. It doesn't necessarily mean the bigger you are, the better you are. Some mm -hmm. companies are big but very inefficient. For instance, Kenya Airways, you know, we've seen that with KPLC over the years. And we've seen very small companies, especially agricultural stocks like Williamson T, Kakuzi, Sassini, which are very efficient and have a stable dividend income. So once you come to us, it's not just about, you know, Safaricom is 57% of the market share. It's actually a coincidence that it's the biggest and it's one of the best performing stocks, yeah? Mm -hmm. Even looked at by foreigners, not just locals. So, yes, size of the company it does not have a positive correlation necessarily with, uh, with income. Okay. Yeah. So, ideally... This process cannot happen without you, the stockbroker. What process is that? Even if I, uh, let's say today, I realize that the Safaricom share is doing well, maybe I want to buy it. This, this process cannot happen without the stockbroker. So if, yes and no, if you'd already opened an account with us and we are the ones representing you in the face of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, which means you're using our license, mm -hmm. which we pay for to uh, the Nairobi Securities Exchange, then yes, from the comfort of your home, through your Jengis Jikuze app, it's easy for you to just go in, buy a share, sell, no one really cares as long as your account is funded. If you're buying and if you're selling, we'll immediately uh, uh, deposit your account after T plus three, which is the <coughs> sorry trading plus three days. But if you've not opened an account, just sit there and you want to just get onto the market and trade. No, we can't do that for obvious uh, uh, regulatory requirements. You know things like money laundering. You have to be verified, etc. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'll just come back to you in a bit, Kevin, about just how then uh, I can identify now that th th there is power with, uh, within my hands. Mm -hmm how I can identify the company to invest in. But I think we jumped the, the horse in a bit. Mm -hmm. David, what are the, um, so from my, the barber and the agribusiness, I know if I sell the nya nya in a year, I'll get this amount. And uh, if from the barber shop, I'll shave you and I'll shave him and in the evening, I'll have 500 bob. So how do I, where are the returns from in our investing in the exchange? All right, okay, thank you very much. So when you're in the stock market, we typically have two major types of income. <clears throat> One of them is actually long term. For example, uh, and I'll, I'll just break it down for our audience if you don't mind, and, uh, and in no way demeaning any person. So a, a share is like a pizza. You know, uh, it's a unit of ownership in a company. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying that you want to invest in Safaricom, you're saying that Safaricom is like this big share, and then you own a piece. Ah, it's like this big pizza, and you own a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So every time that <coughs> Safaricom makes a profit, then you're going to share in what we call a dividend. So uh, based on your share, the profits that they get, they will give now to you as a shareholder because you are the owner of that company. So when you buy into, uh, into shares, you're actually buying into ownership of these companies, but it is part ownership. So you have, you have a unit ownership in that company. So you are part of the people who are the shareholders. And then you're entitled to also profits uh, when they make and they, they give that in form of a dividend. And then secondly, uh, also, you can also get even a bonus. So they can say, instead of giving you a dividend, we are going to give you a bonus. A bonus is that instead of, uh, it's like, a, you know, like, uh, in, uh, like one of the uh, pizza. They say, buy one, get one free. Mm -hmm. So they can also be able to give you an additional one. So a bonus is a really, shareholder. Yeah, it becomes more, more shares in that company. So you can be able to get that and sometimes even split it. So they can split it into many. So if you had 
five shares, uh, then you can have 10 if it is a one is to two. So there are different ways you get rewarded. And then also the company can make a profit, the company can make a loss. Or like what happened in, in this COVID, uh, post-COVID, some companies were facing some turbulence uh, and then what happened, they couldn't be able to declare a profit like what they did the year before. So they issue a profit warning saying to warn you as an investor that you're going to make less money. Mm. And then when they do that, then you may not be entitled to a, a dividend. So it's not always that you get a dividend, but it's always good to get good companies that have uh, maybe a good strategy, good leadership. Look at the leaders, who are they, what are they doing with the business? They usually publish an annual report. Learn also to read about it. Where, where is this company going? And then number two, so one way of making money is through dividend income. Mm -hmm. And mainly the blue chips, the good companies that are, have a steady income or a good strategy and all that would be good for dividends. Then people also buy shares for capital gains. What that simply means is buy, buy low, sell high. Mm -hmm. So that means that, for example, if Safaricom was at two shillings, he mentioned it went until maybe, say, 39. So you can imagine that difference in price. So you can buy at two shillings, and then when it goes high, then you are able to exit. And then that way you'll have made your money. So the difference, so it will be the 39 minus the two shillings, mm -hmm. so that is 37 shillings. And you can see that return, you don't get it even in real estate, in a barber shop or in any other okay. area. And that's for short, short term, and then for the dividends, is if, if you can be patient and wait Yeah, you can be term. patient. Okay. The companies that All pay right. also a dividend on a regular basis. We are basis. actually getting a lot of feedback from, the, from our audience and questions of people who want to know more from you. But even before, just before we get the feedback then, uh, Kevin, he's spoken about the, the issue about buying and selling. But the fact that the, the price has gone down and I am buying and wait for it to, to come up doesn't mean it will necessarily come up, right? Correct. It could be the... It could stay down or go down further. Okay. So there's the concept we call um, averaging down. So I bought Safaricom, I think at IPA it was around five shillings, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah? Mm. And many guys went in, there was that hype that David spoke about. And you kept know. going down. Yes. So guys got in and the share thing hit around, I think 2.5 or 3.5 Kenyan mm. shillings. And guys were frustrated and they started doing what you call panic selling. Mm -hmm. So many people started dumping stocks and as David explained, at 3.5 when more people dump, you know, it starts going to 2.5 shillings until it gets a base, which you call a, a, resist, a, a, a resistance, then starts bouncing back up. Mm -hmm. So yes. And the reason we talk to individuals is that do not panic sell. As a famous uh, businessman Warren Buffett says, buy when they're exiting, sell when they're coming in. You know, mm -hmm. So when the stock is really hitting lows, you get in. When guys are not comfortable, they've started believing in the company and they're coming in, sell to them, exit with them. Yeah. So again, back to David's points, always have a strategy. If you can't formulate that by yourself, we are happy to help you as, as your financial advisors. Okay. Yes. But there's also an aspect of greed. There is, uh, and people come in with different <laughs> expectations. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think you've seen that uh, most recently and currently in cryptocurrencies, yeah? Mm. Guys here, Bitcoin has hit 5 million, and most of them uh, went in uh, around April, May levels. Again, it went all the way down to, to 3.5, you know? And guys were like, okay, I think here we, we, we were uh, deceived. Mm. So you need to have a plan, and a plan cannot have emotions in it. A, fin a solid financial plan should be immune to emotions, yeah? When the stock, you bought it at 5 bob, it goes to 3 bob, it doesn't necessarily mean you But sell. I'm losing my money, Kevin. Yes. How can I not be emotional? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you can be emotional, but don't put that emotion on your portfolio, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't go and panic sell. Always consult your financial advisors. We always do what you call uh, 12 months or one-year projections, yeah? And in one-year projections, we could tell you we expect Safaricom to go up by 15%. It doesn't necessarily mean it will, will be happen. a steep, positive curve, yeah? Mm -hmm. We'll have some ups and downs just as you're taking a journey. So, yes, survive the downs, but in the long term, we foresee for A, B, C, D, we foresee this company being at X price. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. That's a good place to get. Yeah, can I just chip in? Okay. Yeah, and to help you about the emotion. Learn to catch your losses. You, you can't mean? be too attached to a particular stock. Mm -hmm. If it is not performing, uh, let it go. And all respect to my mother. One time she bought uh, 40, <laughs> as Mumia says, real life story, true mm -hmm. story. We are reflecting during her birthday. around 40 and then uh, she still held on to it she felt bad and I uh, she came for advice I told her just hold on if you sell right now it's a paper loss there's something they call paper loss yeah. but if you sell it will actualize the loss it went down to 35 hey she's saying you're sure I shouldn't sell <laughs> then I tell her no if you sell now you'll actually make more losses mm -hmm. do you know it went until 20 
She told me, please, David, Let don't talk to me about the stock it. market. Yeah, and then it went to, <laughs> to 10 shillings. It is now <laughs> 2 shillings. So you have to learn. It was a painful lesson, mm. but I am, I'm grateful we could laugh over it. And also it was a lesson that we, have, we, we, we learned we made, but you don't have to make the same mistake. So if you see a company is going down, mm. learn to cut 